Welcome to the first lesson of learning MATLAB in this uh, video series. Um, first thing I wanted to do is show this handout that I put up on D2L. It starts with a question. How, how would you uh, print a sine wave on a computer screen? It's easy to do in Excel, right? You just make two columns and you fill them out. And um, uh, and it's shown here in this introduction how, how I would do that. And the other way to do is what we've been doing all this time is to have C, to do in C. And so the way to do that is with a for loop, and you'd have to have a certain number of values, and you'd have to make a, a time array, which is a delta t, some increment pi over 8. And you have to define pi here. And then you have to have y as sine of t sub i. And so the, you do that. And then after that, you'd have to have some graphics tool. There are plenty of them out there. But um, uh, you'd have to use a graphics tool in C. So it's a, for, for easy, handy, um, printing, graphing, looking at data, visualizing data. C is actually a pretty weak tool. C is a very good tool for doing large calculations, lots of number crunching. But it's not that good for um, handy, um, easy uh, computation. So um, uh, a tool that's much better than that is MATLAB. So you click on MATLAB. Comes up. Um, that's a, the symbol for MATLAB. It's a special symbol. And so up comes this MATLAB environment. MATLAB is a fourth generation computing language. Fourth generation has one specific meaning, which is it is for a specific purpose. MAT in MATLAB stands for matrix. It's good for matrix manipulation, matrix math, all sorts of stuff. It's not math, but it do, it's good for all sorts of numerical stuff and matrix stuff. It's really good for linear algebra and matrices manipulation, and it's also good for numerical methods. So that's why engineers use it a lot. Um, it's also many fourth generation fourth generation languages are also environments so this is, has its own environment so if you see this little double arrow thing it's like your terminal or your con command prompt console it's not a dollar sign or whatever the what for other things the the prompt for that um, uh, but it is an interactive environment and so you can actually test things out you can program in it for sure and we're going to program in matlab but it's also um, it, it, you can also do on-the-fly calculations, just to let you know. I almost never use a calculator anymore. I always uh, bring up MATLAB when I have to do any kind of real calculations. So you can say 2 plus 2, and it will give you the answer. <clears throat> 4. And, and notice what, what, another thing popped up here in the workspace. Now there's a variable called ants answer, and it has a value of 4. If I wanted to say x equals 2 plus 2, then there would be this answer x, and, and then inside of x would also be 4 there. So this workspace tells you um, the, the, the things that are inside your environment, the variables that you've made inside your environment, and what and to some degree what their value is. Sometimes it does that. You can also say the sine of pi. So ants just changed its value from 4 down to, ooh, is that right? What's, what is sine of pi? 0. Well, it's 1.24. 2, 4, 6, e to the minus 16. That's really close to zero. This shows you that MATLAB, unlike um, Mathematica or Maple or any of the symbolic mathematical um, environments you might have been uh, using, this is a numerical um, uh, environment. It does numerical calculations. So it does know pi, but it doesn't know pi to a lot of places. It knows pi up to a certain point, and so it rounds off. And so the sign of that number very close to pi is almost zero, but not quite zero. So we, there is a little bit of numerical error in here. Um, one thing about this pi thing is that MATLAB already knows what pi is. Wow, that's nice, right? Um, and so there's a lot of things in MATLAB that are already predefined and everything. And I also didn't have to declare x as a uh, integer or float or anything like that. MATLAB knew it was a number variable and it knows how it knows the difference between it, it can uh, it can uh, navigate between um, floats and integers really well. So uh, MATLAB is a lot easier uh, than C. Why am I teaching? Why did I teach C first? Is because uh, I wanted to teach a um, 
a, a real third generation language, how to actually write code and compile code and link code. And that isn't, that's, you can't really do that in MATLAB. Uh, and also, um, the, you, there are all sorts of shortcuts in MATLAB that you have to actually learn how to do the long cuts to do programming in other languages. So uh, that's why I did C first. Um, but there's going to be a lot of times when you say, wow, MATLAB's uh, way faster than C, way easier than C. And it's true. For many, many things it is. So, um, uh, so let's, let's plot out a number. So um, you can make um, arrays. You can fill up arrays. You can make an array variable, fill it up immediately. T equals starting at zero, going by pi over eight to two times pi. It just did it right there. So the first, the first element, column one, is zero, and that last column is two pi, right? And the the middle one is one pi, so that looks right. The ninth one is one pi. It's in column format, so I don't like that. So you can just say t equals t prime. So prime is the same thing as the transpose. So there it is. That looks better, right? And then you can say y equals sine of t. Then y comes up, and then you can plot them. Where'd it go? There it is. So you can plot sine here pretty quickly. Wow, that was fast and easy, right? So MATLAB to some in, to some people is even easier than Excel in doing this kind of uh, graphics, graphical representation of data, printing out plots, um, uh, making graphs, things like that. Um, you don't even need to do make y. You can just say plot t sine of t. So inline, it does inline calculations, and it's there. I'm bearing the lead on this, which is, if you look here, I said, first off, I made t without a for loop. I ju it just knows how to do it by using these colons. Start at 0, colon, step by pi over 8, colon, end at 2 pi, right? Um, and then... Uh, and then when I calculated y, I didn't have to say 4, i equals 0, i less than uh, 17, i plus plus, y sub i equals sine of t sub i. I didn't have to do that. I just was able to do it in one command, and it figured it out. This has a name. It's called vectorization. So MATLAB is a vectorized language where in a lot of situations you don't have to use loops. Sometimes you want to force it. Sometimes you have to force things and so you want to do it with a loop and so there are for loops in and while loops and all that stuff in MATLAB it's just a lot of times you don't have to do it because MATLAB is vectorized so that's the or that's the beginning there's a, there's a lot of other um, printing um, uh, ways to print things out for example if you wanted to say z equals open square braces sine of t cosine of t plot t z that's one way to um, that's one way to plot two things two things at once or you can just say plot you can say plot t sine sine t t cosine of t and it comes up it comes up that way too. So with the, with this, you need an x y pair, x x and y, x and y, x and y, or x and a, something that has a bunch of y's in it that way, but it all has to be one variable. So that's the beginning of MATLAB, and it's a very brief introduction. There's other stuff that goes on. Um, next time we're going to talk about um, uh, um, some various types of calculations. They kind of want. That's the end of the first lesson.